What is power engineering? In my other video, what can you do with an electrical engineering degree, I mentioned several branches of the electrical engineering field. Fields such as power, RF, and communications, just to name a few. And since then, I have received a lot of requests for power engineering. So today, I will give you a brief overview of what power engineering is. Let's begin. After taking the fundamental electrical engineering classes, you will begin to notice that power is in every circuit and power is everywhere. Power is consumed by your cell phone. Power turns on the lights at home. Power propels the latest cars. Basically, electrical power is in all of the modern world. Just look at this picture of Europe from outer space. It's amazing how it has changed human life. In electrical engineering, this is the largest and oldest route since it allows everything to work. So as an electrical engineer focusing on this field, what can you expect? Although this branch touches on all fields, power classes taught at a university will focus on elements and devices related to generation, transmission, and distribution of electrical power. The biggest and most known system that accomplishes this is the power grid. The grid is basically a network that generates, transmits, and distributes power to serve the requirements of businesses and the people. This network requires design, construction, maintenance, and development. So if you decide to focus on power engineering, you will most likely be working supporting some aspect of the grid or a smaller system to serve a similar purpose. Other systems include off-the-grid networks that provide power for certain areas, a smart grid, which is basically a grid of the future, with feedback and other forms of energy, or even in systems that have their own distribution, such as planes or ships. What makes this field different from other electronics classes is the level of power. This field is typically associated with high voltages and high currents, typically in the kilovolts and kiloamps. This is done to reduce the loss across such long distances, since a lot of the power classes will focus on transmission. This also means the devices that you will be working on are not integrated chips, but are large, heavy-duty components that can handle high power. Just a quick note, this also means power engineering is the most dangerous, as far as electrical engineering goes. Now let's take a few minutes to talk about the three most important components that you will be dealing with. The first, generators. Generators convert one form of energy into electrical energy. Generators began with a concept discovered by Michael Faraday known as electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction basically describes how mechanical energy can be transformed into electrical energy by constantly changing a magnetic field. Most of the world's power is generated mechanically, as described, via the burning of coal. But in recent years, solar generators and other forms of alternative energy have become very popular. So a big branch within power engineering will continue to unfold as new challenges arise in using other sources of energy. Second, transformers. No, not those. Yes, those. Transformers are devices all around us. They are all around the city, they are outside your home, and they are in those black boxes connected to your computer charger. These devices serve the purpose of stepping down or stepping up voltage. This means that they can change voltages either by making it smaller or making it larger. This is achieved via the relationship between electricity and magnetism. By controlling the number of wires around one side of the iron core, we are able to control a magnetic flux, which induces a known voltage on the opposite side. These devices are heavily used in the power grid as they allow us to convert the high voltage from the transmission lines to lower levels to use at home, and then again to even lower levels for appliances. The physics and equations that describe transformers will be covered in class. 3. Safety devices As far as safety devices will, relays, fuses, and circuit breakers are used in power. These devices can also be found everywhere on the grid. They serve as protection circuits in order to avoid very dangerous situations in the transmission of such high power. Falls or abnormal currents can cause fatal damage and fires. So all these devices are used to cut the connection and prevent currents from flowing, thus preventing danger. 
So if you decide to major in power engineering, you will be dealing with a lot of these safety devices. These devices, along with power transmission concepts like single phase, three phase, power factor, and power electronics will be covered in detail as you begin to take the power classes at your university. The concepts are among the oldest in the industry, but as you can see, they are still very important, especially with the new trend of alternative energy. One thing to note is that just because power engineering focuses on the grid and other power generating networks does not mean that you will not be dealing with regular electronics, signals, or even software. Our modern world has been integrating sensors and software into our power network, so your power job could be programming simulations, programming tests, working with developers, or even analyzing data. So just because you want to work with power doesn't mean your other classes are not important. Something that I saw at my university was the students will not focus on other classes because they believed they wouldn't need the other disciplines in your job, only to realize that they did. So, as a tip, I would suggest you pay attention and try your best in all your classes, regardless of your emphasis. Another thing to note is that in engineering jobs, things are constantly evolving and changing, so you must always keep learning. This is another big reason why I always mention that you should focus on the field that seems the most interesting to you, because you will have to continue learning after obtaining your degree. So the more you're interested, the easier it will be. So that's it for this video. Again, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and subscribe for more videos. If you're interested in knowing more or how to get an engineering internship, check out the videos below.